What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we shall start out our evening by riding on a train, although it may be morning for you or evening, I don't know. It's going to be different depending on where you are on the globe because planetary stuff is why. Let's get on out of here. Damn solar system and its shifting time zones. Anyways, the rest of the trip home is uneventful, but one thing is clear, someone is hunting you. This ambush was no chance gang warfare, but an organized attempt on your life. If Green Winners was right, then whoever killed him is now after you. The PDA that you retrieved from your attackers may hold some answers. It's time to return to your safe house and consult Paul Amsel. Yeah, no joke. I mean, I don't think there was any confusion about that. The game feels the need to point it out, but I don't think there was any confusion about the fact that guys with gas masks and ridiculously amazing cyber armor just dropped in and tried to kill us. If they didn't come from a dragon, I don't know what a strike team looks like. So, basically what a kill team is, I realize I used this word like eight times in the last episode without ever telling you what it is. It's street slang for a bunch of mercenaries that are sent by like a corporation after you, and they can range from anywhere just like hit squads to like highly organized people that can shut down the entire U-Bond system like you just saw and arrange for you to be attacked like that. So it could be anything from just like a drive-by, like a kill team could just do a drive-by, for example, if they're like amateurs, or if that's the most efficient way to do it, but that what you saw right there was kind of the mark of a very wealthy individual. So, kill teams tend to happen when you make somebody angry, and I'm willing to bet since they were dressed the same way. I mean, they could have been from Herr Fuchs, I don't think so. But anyways, I mean, we have made enemies thus far in this playthrough. We've made a couple enemies that would all be out for our blood if we weren't careful. Alright, so let's notify Beckenbauer of everything that went down. Hello again, mine friend. What can I do for you? I've uncovered what Humanus is up to. You'll find the details on this data pad. Beckenbauer's eye, Beckenbauer eyes the plans on the data pad, then nods grimly. This fits with Humanus' established pattern of behavior, horrific and vile. According to this data pad, Humanus compounds all over Berlin have received similar shipments. They're planning to destroy the gas tomorrow morning, or deploy the gas tomorrow morning. He exhales sharply, then nods again. I have a feeling that the flux state will have a thing or two to say about that. Stahl has overstepped his bounds. His hubris will be his undoing. You mark my words, within the next few hours, the Humanist Poly Club is going to take a hammering that will make the Night of Rage look like a peace rally. I owe you a great deal, Three Toe. We all do. I will wire your payment to the account number that Amsel provided. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Let's see if we can make a donation. There we are. Are you accepting donations? And so, as before, he said yes. I'm going to give him the 250 now. Samuel's eyes widened. This is incredibly generous. Thank you, Monfron. So we gave him 250 new yen. With this donation, we've reached our first goal. Thank you so much for your kind assistance. I will put your contribution to work stocking the shelter with blankets and heaters. Not a problem. Please do not downplay your contribution. You've shown kindness at a time when few others will. That means something. It means a great deal. Since we're about to get paid out again, I might as well drop some more cash. I'll give him 350 this time and see what happens. He says the same thing. Marvelous. Truly marvelous. With this contribution, we've reached our second goal. We'll put this money to use stocking the library with a full range of literature, philosophy, poetry, and training manuals. Thanks again for your help, Three Toe. You've made a tremendous difference in this community. Happy to help, Sam. And so, what's the next donation? Let's see. The library is marvelous, Three Toe. You've worked miracles for this organization. The next goal is to purchase a set of trode nets for our new work training program. I have high hopes in this plan, Three Toe. With these devices, we could teach job skills to the least educated members of our society in a fraction of the time that it would take for them to learn it on their own. With 400 new yen. Okay, so we're strapped for cash right now. Well, don't, I just gave you like 700 new yen. He's like, oh, it's a common excuse. Whatever. A trode net. I don't really remember what a trode net is. Let me think about it for a second. From what I'm, I'm guessing, it's kind of like the Matrix, but like not like the Matrix here in Shadowrun, but the Matrix like, whoa, I know Kung Fu. It's like similar. It's like a training program that teaches you how to do stuff really fast. Let's talk with, oh, I don't know. Let's get paid first. I think that's probably going to be the most important thing we should probably do considering how broke I am. Our pockets are absolutely empty there. We have nothing burning a hole in our pocket except for air. So if somebody accepts air as currency, we'll be in good shape. Dante, let's give him a pet. You look down to see a pair of bright eyes sent into a scruffy face looking back up at you. It's Dante one more time. Let's go ahead and see if he can sit. He sits. Play dead. Have you learned that one yet? It seems he doesn't know it. Well, damn. We'll give him a pet and walk away. And he gives us a woof. Sometimes that's the best you can ask of your furry friends. Amso calls over his shoulder at the sound of your approach. His eyes are glued to his computer's display. Three toe. Frau Muller should be on her way, but before you go to the meeting site, I have news. He glances off at you and his worlds trail away. Upon seeing the expression on your face, Amsel's voice becomes grave. It can wait. Tell me what's happened. 
Well, we can say I had some trouble on the U-Bahn. Somebody set up an ambush. Amsel pauses, then gives a curt nod. Truth be told, I've been expecting something like this might happen. I'm just glad that you made it out alive. We hand over the encrypted PDA. One of the attackers dropped this. Amsel takes the PDA from you and examines it. Yes. Yeah, I should be able to extract some information from this. Give me a moment. He plugs the PDA into his computer and goes to work. A few moments later, he lets out a grunt of dismay. Well, 3-2, I was able to recover a file, but unfortunately that's all that I'll ever be able to pull off of this thing. All that anyone will, truth be told. It must have been running some time of counter-intrusion member- some kind of counter-intrusion software. The instant that I gained access, it bricked itself. Amsel disconnects the useless PDA and drops it to the ground. It clatters to a rest on the metal floor. Well, we can- what did you manage to pull off of it? I'm not gonna berate him. I mean, this guy's my one connection to all manner of lucrative work, and you never want to piss off a guy like that. A com file. The audio file, or the audio is all there, and it looks like we've only got video from one side of the conversation. Let's see what we have. He opens the file, and a nightmaringly, nightmarishly familiar face fills the screen. Bachmeyer. The voice bleats out from Ansel's speakers, filling the room. Aldran here. What's your status? Bachmeyer's image is garbled, but his voice sounds young and eager. Target acquired, sir. You were right. We spotted him on the U-Bahn, just like you said. Probably on his way to a job. As per your instructions, we're going to try and take him out on his way back. He'll be more vulnerable that way. Hopefully injured and low on ammo, too, but only time will tell. Good man. Proceed as instructed. Will do. Kosman is rigging up the ambush spot now. We'll try to make it quick. The orc, mar the orc with the nightmare face nods. Send me a comm when the job is done. Out and out. The image on the computer screen dies and Ansel turns to face you. Well, our scarred friend makes an appearance. Frito, I suspect that Green Winter's predictions are coming true. I believe that the Firewing is behind all of this. Under Amsel's patient exterior, you can feel the worry that's eating at him. Be on your guard, you and the rest of your team. You made it through this attack relatively unscathed, but next time you may not be so lucky. We'll be fine. I carried us through this attack, and I'll carry us through the next. Your overconfidence is alarming, but not unexpected. I just hope that this doesn't wind up getting your team killed. I said we'll be fine. Now, you said that you had something for me when I first came in. What was it? Well, as I was saying when you first approached, I was able to uncover some new evidence in your absence. Uh, coincidentally enough, the evidence pertains to our scarred friend. You might recall that I dig dug into Audrin's skin grafts while well, I did in the search has borne fruit. One of my contacts outside of Berlin handles the paperwork for private hospitals all across Germany. It's a dull, boring job, but it does have its perks. Amsel pulls open a file on his computer. A medical chart opens on the screen. As it turns out, our scarred friend's skin grafts were performed at a legitimate hospital after all. Some good news for once, what do they say? Well, they're rather light on identifying information. Our friend's name is listed as Max Musterman, the local equivalent of John Doe. But they do cover his injuries in quite a good amount of detail. Aldrin's injuries were extensive. He had two broken ribs and a shattered pelvis, and he had sustained third-degree burns over 60% of his body. Most damningly of all, he was suffered from acute radiation poisoning. His body absorbed over 5,000 millisieverts of ionizing radiation, a lethal dose without treatment. The information dries up at this point. We know that he was treated and discharged, but what happened afterwards remains a mystery. He pauses for a moment, studying your reaction. Your thoughts? Hold nothing back. I'd like to hear everything that comes to mind. Well, we can say that he did time in the socks. We can say that the burns sound like dragon fire, but if he got burned, why would he be working for her now? Or we can say that the hospital couldn't ID Aldrin. Either somebody or somebody covered the tracks for him. He was living off the grid. Let's talk about the burns first. Well, those burns sound like dragon fire. But if the Firewing burned Aldrin, why would he be working for her now? I don't think that Aldrin is working for the Firewing. I believe that he is serving her. On Green Winter's second DVD, he mentions that there's a cult within the Sox that worships the Firewing, the Disciples of the Cleaning Fire, or the, <laughs> the Cleansing Fire, same thing, whatever. I believe, or it is cleaning, God, dyslexia messing with me today. I believe that Aldrin belongs to this cult. That's bad news, there's nothing more dangerous than a zealot. My thoughts exactly. A hireling can sometimes be bribed or reasoned with, but a pawn and a pawn can be liberated. But if the firewing soldiers look upon her as a goddess figure, nothing short of killing her will deter them, and even that might not stop them. So it's possible that Aldrin is a dragon cultist. This seems to fit with much of the other information that we've uncovered. Did any rather red flags jump out at you? Well, he may have spent some time in the socks. That radiation poisoning doesn't happen on its own. Agreed. 5,000 millisieverts is a lot of exposure. Short of basking in the glow of an unshielded reactor, I don't know how he'd absorb that much ionizing radiation without spending some time in the socks. Alright, so he was irradiated, most likely from time spent in the socks. What else does this tell you? Well, the hospital couldn't ID Aldrin, so either somebody covered his tracks for him, or he was living completely off the grid. Indeed, if Aldrin were a denizen of the Sox, a glow punk, his lack of identifying information would make sense. Amsel adjusts his glasses. It's a working theory at any rate. 
So in order to sum up, Algernon has probably spent some time in the Sox. It's possible that he even lived there as a member of Firewing's Dragon Cult, and he is after you. Amsel pauses for a moment before continuing. In my mind, all of this reinforces one simple fact. We need to find Val Claire and we need to do it fast. Agreed. Good, and that's all the more reason to gather Alice's fee as quickly as possible. There's a buzzing sound from Paul's wrist. He lifts his hand to look at his PDA, and as luck would have it, Frau Muller has arrived. Best of luck at the meeting, Three Tail. Remember, this is urgent. We need that money. I'm on it. Let's go talk to Dietrich and see if he's got any background information for us. Dietrich shakes his head and looks furious. You left me behind. My fucking nephew was in that complex and you knew it and you left me. His blood is on your hands and we and oh, we both know it. I've got nothing more to say. Oh, I forgot about that. That was a subplot that I completely and totally forgot about. Well, we don't know that he got killed. Come on. Like, he might survive. It's not so bad. Come on. It'll be fine. That's a subplot that I totally forgot about, but I don't think we would have made it with two mages anyways. Bringing two mages, that was a pretty hard fight. Like, the guys inside that building, we were outnumbered, outgunned, and so forth. We wouldn't have been able, we didn't use our decker, so I suppose we could have brought him instead of Blitz, but in any case, we went with the smart decision anyways. Running two mages would have been a little weird. Eh. Iger welcomes you with a nod. Three toe, what can I do for you? Any thoughts about that last run? After all of the moral ambiguity that I've been wading through, hitting Humanus was incredibly satisfying. What they had planned just makes my blood boil. Just thinking about it. I still wish that I could have put a bullet in Stahl's spine, but if the fallout from tonight's run is as far reaching as I, th as I think it's going to be, he's probably going to wind up wishing that he were dead, and that's almost as satisfying. Ask if she trusts us. Yeah, yeah, I do. You've earned that much. I haven't always agreed with your decisions, Three Toe, but you've proven your competence. It's only fair for me to acknowledge it. Tell me what happened to your team. This again? Why do you even care, Three Toe? Well. I'm going to go with the first option, because it's pretty clear that if you had your way, you'd probably still be with him, and a good leader places a priority on knowing his team. She slowly nods. All right, I'll tell you. I suppose that you deserve to know. What happened to us was Hoffman. He was a rookie, the kid of some big-money corporate exec. He looked good on paper, and he made it through KSK training, so he was technically qualified to join a team, but he was way too green to fit in with ours. Still, he wanted to be a hero, and his family had enough clout to get him the assignment of his choosing. I don't know how many strings Hoffman's daddy had to pull to get him assigned to our team, but he pulled him. Hoffman became our ninth squad mate, despite Metzger's ob objections. Anyways, flash forward a few weeks, and we were closing in on one of the Russian mob's major, major trafficking operations. They've been using a series of warehouses 50 miles from the border as a staging area for the convoys. Women and girls from Eastern Europe were being housed there. When the convoys came, they'd be crammed into cargo containers and hauled across the border into Germany. Go to any brothel along the border and have a look around. Chances are you'll find at least a few girls who spent some time in those warehouses. Slovakians, Hungarians, Poles, you name it. The mob had been smuggling them in for over decades. So when we were in a position to derail, derail the operation and we weren't going to let our... Uh, oh, God. But we were in a position to derail our operation and we weren't going to let our new addition slow us down. We hit them by surprise and we hit them hard. Fisher and Braun managed to take down the Banshee that they had patrolling the site. Wolf had reconnaissance drones overhead providing Battletech feeds to the rest of us, and we picked off their gunmen one by one. They had numbers on us, but they didn't know where to hit us. We had eyes in the sky, and we had cover and concealment. Every time they thought they had a fix on us, we'd shift positions and hit them again. They might as well have been fighting ghosts. Then Hoffman broke cover and gave away our position. After that, all hell broke loose. Wolf went down first. The sound of it will haunt me for the rest of my lives. Or the rest of my days. An explosion, a choked scream, then this long, drawn-out gurgling sound. When he died, his drones went down with him, and there were too many hostiles to track without him. I'll spare you the gory details, Three Toes. Suffice it to say that my team was wiped out. Iger's face clouds again. You can see the tears beginning to well in her eyes. I watched Metzger die. With a visible effort, she clamps down on her emotions and calms herself. When she speaks again, her voice is flat. I took three rounds myself. Had to drag myself back across the odor nests into Germany. I almost died. That's the story. My KSK career died with the rest of my team. Our mission was illegal, after all. It was off the books, and so there was no going back for me. I wound up here. She looks you in the eye. Her tone is impassive. Did that tell you everything you wanted to know, fearless leader? You satisfied now? Yes, thank you, Iger. So tell me, what's your takeaway from my tale of woe? I figure you've got to have one. Well, we can say that when Monica died, it makes sense that she blamed me since I was the new guy. And we can say that she's hung up on the pass and needs to let it go. I'm not going to push that button. Let's go ahead and say when Monica died, you blame me because I was new to the team, but I'm not Hoffmaniger. Yeah, she nods. I know that. 
And you're right, to a point. I might have judged you too harshly because of Hoffman, but everything else that I said was justified. Giving you command of the team was a hasty decision and made for the wrong reasons, and I stand by the assessment. But between then and now, I've been watching you like a hawk, and you've grown, Thrito. You weren't the right choice to lead before. I still believe that, but you are now. Thanks, Iger. Good talk. She nods. Until next time. Let's get our money and see how we get paid out right here. I'm a little disappointed about Dietrich's nephew because I'm one of those people who likes to get all the best outcomes, but a little bit of drama never killed anything. The cool blue tones at the workstation is back up. Let's check for new messages. One unread message. Salvage DVD. The screen flickers to life and Malit's face appears. From the shifting background and ambient noise, it's clear that this message was recorded on a portable device. Hey, Thrito, I just wanted to tell you that I've met with limited success in working on that stack of DVDs. It's a thorny problem, but at least I'm making some headway. If you look on the table beside your DVD player, you'll find another recovered disc. I wasn't able to salvage all, salvage all of the files on it, but I think you might find what I did recover to be of interest. For my part, I'm going to continue working on the other DVDs. To tell you the truth, I wouldn't hold out much hope, though. They're all badly damaged and suffering from disc rot besides. I'll be in touch. Best to you and your team. Okay. Let's get paid. And so there it is. We managed to get ourselves $37.50. Here's your payment as promised, Beckenbauer. A moment later, a second message pops onto your screen, the payment details. So we've sent 6,000 to our crew. We've sent 1,500 for ammunition resupply costs. 11,000 to Alice, so that puts us up at, actually I have to check on Alice. I think we're sitting at maybe 20,000 for Alice, as I recall. In any case, we got paid. We also want to check our BBS. And we will find our payment for the sold data. The Pharma AG is ready to go, and so we made 430 from there, so it's going to be 387 after escrow. Let's post some pay data because I know we have some. There's the Humana safe house list. And after that point, we could probably go to the jobs directory and figure out... I don't know if we have to go with Herr Muller right this second, but let's look at pending jobs. We've got the Mark 16 extraction. I'm probably going to go for that. And so it says, greetings, Herr Amsel. I trust that this connection is secure. Naturally. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? You may call me Herr Schmidt. Very well, Herr Schmidt. You have some business for me? Indeed, I have a job for your team. A simple matter. Judging by what you've told me about your team, I imagine they will be well suited to the task. Go on. The interests that I represent have learned... Oh, we already looked up to this. Yeah, this is the one that we already signed up for. Okay, so that's one that we just hadn't done yet. I was a little bit misinformed. I need to check my Alice fund as well. Oh, we're sitting at almost 30,000. Okay, so we're doing really well from there. I mean, if we do the job for Herr Muller, we'll be done with the way that they're extracting files from us. So with the cash that we're sitting on right now, we got four grand. Let's go talk to Glory, and we'll make some snap decisions on how we want to spend the money in just a moment. Three-toe, what do you need? I've got a question for you, Glory, of the personal kind. I'm not big on sharing, sport. Well, let's go ahead and go with the option we've already done before. So we can't have started running in the shadows much more than five years ago, top. So which would the vintage chrome? It was cheap and it gets the job done, she shrugs. End of discussion. I don't think so. I've known a lot of street Sams in my time, but I've never met anyone who'd voluntarily install cyberware that old. You're right. There's more to it than I'm letting on, but I'm not interested in talking about it. I can't help but notice that you seem guarded and withdrawn. That's my problem and none of your concern. If whatever happened to you has impaired your ability to trust me, that is my concern. Come on, Gloria. Talk to me. Trust is earned, and I don't know you yet. Maybe later when we get to know each other better, we can talk. But for now, I'd prefer that you dropped it. Well, it looks like we've hit a dead end right there. Let's take a look at our karma. We have 14 karma sitting around, which is a lot. I'm probably going to spend the next little bit on more spirit control. Maybe making sure that we're really, really good at whatever it is that we do over here. Getting conjuring up would probably be a good plan. So we can go 7 right there. And go 6 right there, and we get fire barrier. Good. I'm happy with that decision. We're going to keep plugging along right here until we get a bit further. We're able to max out, so we may as well go for it since we're already an elf. And that six is going to allow us to get fire barrier, although I don't, I don't really know how that's going to benefit us. Let's take a look at We got an extra spell slot. So we're more or less maxed out on space right now, which is really, really sweet. On this side, we can get ourselves another attack spell as well. And so I may try and see if there's anything supportive. I mean, I wish that every... Profession had two attack spells that you could slot, and we may have one. I don't know. We may have some kind of dart or something that might be more useful. 
Let's jump on out here, go fast, and slap the nerf or meter biter sign because that is our rallying battle cry. And head on back out to the bazaar. And once we find what we need there, we'll decide where we're gonna go from here. Taking a look at my equipment, I don't think I need to replace anything. Looks like we've got nitro, we've got cram. Okay, so we've gotta stockpile that stuff in just a moment. But right now, I'm interested in running out to either... We can meet up with Muller, or we can go do the job for the AG Pharma Corp. And I think that's probably going to be the job that I take. Let's go take a look around at the Talus Kramer, though, and see if there's anything that we want to add to our kit before we go any further. So with Algernon, hello again, how may I help you if you're selling, I'm buying, all that, so forth, whatever. Let's go for Conjuring first and see what we can dig out of this pile. There's Haste 3. Fire Barrier looks like it just does damage, so I'd rather keep the Lightning one, I think. What was the Lightning one doing for me? Air Barrier? It does AP damage. And so... Let's go for Outfits first. We've got the Adept's Combat Vest. He still hasn't swapped anything else in right now. We could go for Occult Robes, which might help us out. I think we're rocking... What are we wearing right now? I'll have to look at that. Figure out what bonuses we're gleaning out of this. We've got the Apprentice's Outfit, so it's going to be one Willpower and one Charisma. So we're actually going to lose a Charisma if we take this off. But we could buff ourselves... Eh, I don't know. There's Summoner's Guard Armor, which is a little bit better. I suppose we'll take that then, since we have no other option. Other things that I'd like to buy. We'll go back to the Conjuring menu, and... We've got Mana Charge 1. So we can build our own Ley Line if we need to. Fog seems pretty useful, because the game... What I will say is that the first Shadow Run was really, really good about giving you a lot of cover. This game seems to like making me fight through... A, a lack of cover, so fog might be really useful to us in the next little bit. We might also want to take blur, because blur might be nice for buffing Glory as we send her into fight with people hand to hand. Doesn't look like there's any other attack spells that we could take though. And unfortunately I haven't buffed this up to the case where it's going to be useful. So... Stun Ball, a magical explosion, god. Is it clear that they love mages way more than they love... Like, everything from here is badass. Everything from here, not so badass. I mean, these are all, like, support spells and stuff, but... I feel as though there's definite kind of favoritism being showed with regards to, like, the variety in what you can do... ...with the mage. They've definitely got better abilities, and the list seems longer to me. I don't know, maybe because it's showing every single rank right there? No, I don't think it is. I don't know. Maybe I'm just kind of looking for things to bitch about. Oh, it's the weapons tab that I need stuff from. Okay, so we've already got ap Acid Bolt 3. We could do a downgraded Acid Bolt if we wanted to. We could take Power Bolt 2. She does the same amount as our Acid Bolt, but this doesn't stack. But our targeting will be worse, so I don't think there's any point. Let's grab a new Conjuring spell. We could do Haste 3. But I think I would rather diversify right now. Let's go with Fog. It seems like a really useful spell to have on board in those random occasions where you get caught without any cover. We'll also upgrade our Haste. So let's remove everything one more time because once again all of our abilities are out of order and that bothers me and makes me very, very... Forlorn. We'll also drop the cram. We'll drop that right there. We'll drop the rank one fetish because I don't think a rank one's going to be useful on anything right now, anyways. And so, in organizing, we'll go back and we will have the armored armor. Oh, that's badass as hell. We're looking good now. Yeah, we got the stun of shades on. Got an eagle on our shoulder for freedom amplification. Yep, that's what I like to see. Let's go with a Mana Ball, obviously, and we'll go with Heal. We'll also go with Air Barrier 3, we'll go with Haste 3. We will go with... Fog. And we'll go with 
I don't like shadow that much. I'm not seeing a lot of potential uses for it. I mean, I suppose I could use it if I'm retreating, so maybe we'll keep it for that. So we've got the stuff that we need right there. We've got a lot of pistols and things that we could probably get away with selling off to, so I'll probably go hit up the weapons dealer to get rid of all that. We do want the shotgun for once I buff ranged combat one more time, which will probably be my next move after our next level up, maybe. And I think we'll go... And you know, people didn't like the fact that I was making like a samurai shaman, but I wanted to be like Jake, come on. You guys gotta be with me on that regard. We wanna be like Jake. Everybody wants to be like Jake. Let's go for a couple advanced health kits. A couple basics. Obviously, we're gonna keep a Bamona kit on us. Two Bamona kits, in fact. We'll be like a Rezzer if we need to be. And I like that setup. That's a really, really good setup for a run. I mean, if I was if I had this guy in my team, I'd be like, yeah, this dude's my bro. Let's do the fist. And so it's going to take just a minute to load us back in because we've swapped armor. And hell yeah, we are looking stylish as a maw right now. We are looking good. Let's see what we can do with the remainder of these guns. Since we can't equip them on anybody in our party, we may as well sell them off. And we're going to need Metbok for that. Let's sell off some of these guns because they t they do tend to be worth like a lot of money. And so we'll sell off... No, I don't want the Mossberg. I want to sell both of those though because those are absolutely worthless. We'll also sell off all of our assorted clothing, I guess. We'll sell Haste 1. Probably a good time to sell off all of my drugs too. While I'm here, kind of clear out the stockpile. Cool. And so that's going to give us 1,400 New Yen. Which put us up to a much better position. What outfits does he have? Just kind of like armored stuff. Got one right there with a bonus to the quickness. Well, I'm disappointed that I don't have a character to equip some of this stuff on because it all looks really badass. And I think most of my party members are probably going to have the same equipment the entire game. Just for like branding purposes, they'll just upgrade the armor and the stats on it each time. Let's head on out. Actually, I'm going to save the game here and I'm going to break it off. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. I look forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow in Berlin and take care out there in the shadows, chummers.